Hi friends, in this video we'll go through what network ports are, what does incoming and outgoing traffic mean, how are port numbers grouped, command line tools to reach your port configuration, and understand what your applications and services do with these ports. Port numbers are gateways that applications or services use to send and receive information between two hosts. For example, when you access a website, starting with HTTP, it uses port number 80 on the web server. A website over HTTPS uses port 443. When you connect to a remote client using SSH, it uses port 22. And when you send an email using SMTP, it uses probably port 587. Using different ports makes it possible for different types of data to be sent, received and processed by the right application. If an email was sent to you over the internet to port 22, then your computer wouldn't know what to do with it. Assigning an application per port also makes it possible for computers to work more efficiently by doing more tasks simultaneously. Like visiting a website, downloading a file, remote connecting to a host, or sending emails all at the same time. This way, various applications are able to share computer resources at the same time. There are a total of 65,536 port numbers, going from 0 to 65,535. These ports are grouped in three types. Well-known ports, registered ports, dynamic ports. Well-known ports are also known as system or non-ephemeral ports. And they go from 0 to 1023. They are used by common applications like email and web servers. Here are a few examples of well-known ports that you should probably memorize. But not every port number between 0 and 1023 is in use or assigned to an application. Ports from 1024 to 49,151 are registered ports, also known as user ports. These ports are used by application vendors like Microsoft for SQL on port 1433 or Oracle databases on port 1521. Well-known and registered ports can also be grouped together into defined ports and are normally used by destination computers to listen for incoming requests. All ports starting 49,152 and higher up to 65,535 are dynamic ports, also known as private or ephemeral ports. These ports are for applications or on temporary basis to send data to a destination address on an open port. Dynamic ports are normally used by the source computer, which initiates a request. Dynamic ports all allow multiple clients to connect to defined ports. Incoming and outgoing traffic is always from the perspective of a host. When two computers communicate with each other, the incoming traffic for one host is the outgoing traffic for the other, and vice versa. When data is received by a computer, we're talking about incoming traffic. And this means that the host is listening on a port to receive this data. Depending on what type of data this is, different port numbers would be used. Incoming traffic is also known as inbound traffic or ingress. But sometimes people may use these terms slightly different. For example, one may say that there is a lot of incoming traffic, but most of it is not inbound. In that case, they would mean that even though a lot of data is received by a host, the data doesn't seem relevant to the host. You should disable the incoming traffic on any host as much as possible. I'll sh shortly show this by the end of this video. For outgoing traffic, which is also known as outbound or egress, the host tries to connect with another host and normally the source computer uses one of the dynamic ports to communicate with a well-known or registered port of the destination host. 
when you try to open a web page using a web browser there is a source and destination source is your computer which initiates the request and the destination is the web server running the web page both have an IP address ports are assigned per application or services the source computer uses its dynamic outgoing ports to communicate with anything outside like a web page on a remote web server the destination which is in this case the web server has defined incoming ports open to process this request in this case port 443 would be open to process HTTPS and port 80 for HTTP requests any incoming request on these ports would be sent to the corresponding services to response to the request a web server mostly accepts incoming connections and rarely outgoing a web client that tries to open a web page mostly makes outgoing connections and rarely incoming another example is when you try to remote connect to a host using secure shell your computer uses a dynamic port for example port 61687 to connect to the remote host on port 22 the remote host has port 22 open and listens for SSH requests which it forwards to the service that is responsible for it it's possible to reassign port numbers to a different unused port for example assigning SSH to port 2220 instead of 22 this usually do is done to provide low level security for example moving SSH from port 22 to another port could stop script kiddies like attacks where attackers simply run a pre-built script on port 22 without port scanning but combined with anti-port scan measures it could provide slightly more security to see if moving ports has any effect on your system you can gather logs of failed login attempts from when the port was on default and compare it to after moving the port you should see less failed login attempts after assigning a new port instead of reassigning ports to protect your system try configuring a good firewall with minimum required access improving authorization and authentication method like a good SSH key with strong passphrase intrusion prevention software like fail to ban to block IP addresses that try to dis dictionary attack telnet is a very old command and even disabled by default on some of operating systems but it can be used to see if a port is opened I'm logged in to a VM running Ubuntu 22 LTS in Google Cloud using SSH by entering telnet localhost 22 we can connect with port 22 on our local host and see what type of response it gives this works the same for public addresses in Windows you can use netstat-an to list all active connections this will list the source IP and port which protocol is used destination IP and port and the connection state in Linux netstat is replaced with the ss command based on port number you can see what type of application or service is active for example if you pipe netstat-an with fine string 443 you can filter for active HTTPS requests if I start up a vagrant box and use netstat to find anything with colon 22 then I can see the SSH connection as you can see the vagrant box takes a long time and is stuck during SSH authentication which is something I covered in a previous video if you're interested but if we run netstat again we can see that it keeps trying to establish a new connection each time and this is a reason you could end up with a port exhaustion port exhaustion happens when your computer tries to create many connections and runs out of dynamic ports to create an outbound connection this usually leads to issues like file shares or on a remote server being inaccessible authentication failure DNS name registration fails I'll cover port exhaustion in a future video together with netstat 
almost all connections for all these applications or services will be using either TCP or UDP protocols. And which one to use is defined by the application. TCP and UDP are a subject which I'll cover in a future video, but in short, when an application uses TCP, the connection is reliable because there are checks in place to make sure the data is sent correctly. TCP is, for example, used for web browsing, email, or for file transfer. UDP is unreliable but faster, which is, for example, used for VoIP or video calls, where you don't mind a small glitch. Another tool on Linux systems that is widely used for port scanning is Nmap. Just be aware that port scanning could be considered hostile and get you blocked from a network. Run this only if you're sure that it's permitted, like for example, as I'm doing on a personal virtual machine. Enter Nmap to see if you have Nmap installed. Otherwise, install it using your package manager, like apt. For more information on package managers, watch my previous videos. To run a port scan on the system, enter Nmap dash capital P lowercase n, followed by the IP address of the machine. Here we can see which inbound ports are listening on my Windows machine. In Linux, you can view information about services that applications use and their corresponding port numbers by viewing the file services under etsy directory. Here I'm using a VM using WSL on a Windows 11 machine, which I've covered in a previous video if you're interested. The listing in this file does not mean that the port is blocked or open by a firewall. And the default values are fine as is and should not be changed. If you want to block or open a network port, then you'll need to use a firewall rule. With firewall rules, you'll be able to say which inbound or outbound ports are open. I'll cover firewall rules in a future video, but in your personal Windows 11 PC, I'd recommend disabling your inbound traffic. You can do this by going to Windows Settings, Privacy and Security, Windows Security, Firewall and Network Protection. For the public network, select the option to block all incoming connections, including those in the list of allowed list. You can do the same for the private network. This might cause issues with some applications, but you will see that and then need to find out why the application needs an inbound connection to your computer and where that connection is coming from. It's also possible that the application stops working because of a dependency. Hope you enjoyed this video about network ports and I'll see you in the next video.